Now, before I talk about thanksgiving, let me show you a few things God has made available for you and to you to live a strategic life of advantage. And then you will see that you are struggling with what you are struggling. Not because your God is not interested in you. Not because the things you are doing are not powerful. It's because you don't know how to maximize them or you are not conscious of them. I list seven of them quickly. Number one is prayer. Jeremiah 3.33 Ask of me and we answer. I will show you great and mighty things that you know not of. Every time we pray, there is a response from heaven. That is one of the reasons we pray. He said, unto him that answered prayers shall all flesh gather. So we are praying because there is a God that answers. That was the demonstration of faith that Elijah manifested when he was contending with the prophets of Ba and the prophets of Groove. He told them, I give you from money to evening pray, let your God send down fire. And they were praying. Elijah was making mockery of them. He said, maybe your God traveled. And the guy was quiet all day. These guys prayed. They caught themselves. Blood came out. No answer. No answer because there is no God anywhere to answer. But when Elijah showed up, he didn't take 10 minutes. He set up the altar in order to show them that, oh, this thing is not a spark from anywhere. He drenched the altar with water. He did everything that negated the protocol of fire. When the altar was drenched, Elijah stood. He didn't speak for up to two minutes. Fire fell from heaven. So as far as Elijah is concerned, prayer is a dialogue between a man and his God. He speaks to his God, his God hears, and his God responds to him, and he also hears. And on the strength of that, spiritual possibilities are communicated. And that's not all about prayer. Prayer is also a weapon that God gives to the believer in order to change things in his world. Because there is a type of prayer you pray where you are not talking to God, you are talking to things. When you talk to God, it's fellowship. But when you talk to things, it's dominion. And so in Mark chapter 11, from verse 23, Jesus himself was teaching us about prayer and faith. And here is what he said. He said, for verily I say unto you, that whatsoever ye shall say, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart. He said, but shall believe that those things which he say shall come to pass. He said, he shall have whatsoever he says. And verse 4, 24, hear what Jesus said. He said, therefore, I say unto you. So the first part is the faith part. The faith part is, don't doubt in your heart. So prayer is not about talking. Prayer is about believing. Don't doubt. If you doubt in your heart, you may speak very intelligently. There will be no re re result. So many people have intelligent things to say, but there's no confidence in their spirit. So if you want to doctor your prayer, therefore, to produce result, before talking, work on your spirit, man. The moment your spirit becomes sure, then anything you say, you will have it. This is a code Jesus gave to us who believe in his name. And then he went to verse 24 and said, Therefore, I say unto you, what thing soever ye desire, you won't have it because you desire it. That means desire alone is not enough. After you have desire, he said, when you pray, believe that you have received them. Don't just believe randomly. He said, believe that you are already in possession. He said, then you will have what you say. This is to let you know that prayer is a spiritual infrastructure designed for your advantage. Number one, it helps you connect to God to receive superior intelligence from the realm of God in order to be ahead of your generation and number two it fortifies you with authority to change things on the earth negating your advancement but how many of us are making progress by prayer very few in fact for some of us prayer is burdensome because when we go to pray we want to beat time we don't want to receive we don't want to change things we don't want to travel we don't want to see but this is an advantage every Christian who knows this makes prayer a part of his life so you shouldn't motivate a christian to pray the blessedness of prayer is the motivation for prayer second advantage that we have you have wisdom and principles revealed by the spirit there's nobody seated here who is a fool the bible said the fool say in his heart there's no god that means everybody who acknowledges that there is god has wisdom nobody i'm telling you who is seated here is a fool. We all possess requisite wisdom to live a glorious and enviable life. First Corinthians chapter 1 verse 30 and 31. See what the Bible said. First Corinthians 1 30 and 31. It said, but of him are ye in Christ 
Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. The same way you have redemption, that's how you have wisdom. And your wisdom is not just something you read in a book. Your wisdom is a person living on your inside. It says Christ is made unto you wisdom. That means Christ is your wisdom. Automatically, you are wiser than every ordinary person on earth. The problem is you are not utilizing that wisdom. I showed you already last week from 1 Corinthians chapter 2. From verse 16, he said we have the mind of Christ. So we can judge all things. How can a man who has the mind of Christ struggle with simple problems of life? When Jesus walked on earth, what did he struggle with? They said, oh, we have no food for them. He said, you give them something. They said, we are in the desert. There's no way we can provide food here. And he said, no, it's possible. They said, well, a young lad has five loaves and two fish. Bring it here. And they brought it to him. And he gave thanks and he multiplied. And he fed at least 5,000 men not counting women and children so this type of wisdom is not i know something is that i have power to create change i know something is knowledge the wisdom we are talking about here is called phronesis when you study wisdom there is a level of wisdom called sophia It's the ability to accumulate fact that's what they taught you when you learned philosophy that's what they taught you when you learned the the ways of the world there's another wisdom called sonesis sonesis is the ability to analyze accumulated fact that can only give you idea about the problem. And that's the wisdom the world has. But the wisdom of Christ is called phronesis. It's not just facts accumulated. It's not just facts analyzed. It's the power to create change. So every believer seated here is a problem solver by the instrumentality of wisdom. He doesn't just know that he possesses it or he doesn't know how to deploy it. This is why you study. Is faith. Romans 12 verse 3. The moment we got saved, God himself credited faith into our spirit. He said, for I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God had dealt to every man the measure of faith. This scripture is telling us that there is a manifestation that every one of us can command. But that manifestation is according to the faith that we have. But he also made us understand that this faith, we didn't come about it by our hard work. It was God who credited it to our spirit. You know what that goes to mean? Everybody seated here has enough faith to live a quality life. If he's not living a quality life, it means he either doesn't know he has faith or he either does not know how faith works. So your crisis is not your crisis. What you consider your problem is not your problem. Your problem is actually that you don't know how to use what you have. Because there is a system of advantage called faith that is already in your spirit that you have not yet put to work. I'm showing you this to let you know how fortified the believer is. And this is why the Bible says through knowledge that they just be delivered. These are some of the things we should pursue on a daily basis. Every day, learn to know how prayer works and master it. Every day, learn to know how faith works and master it. This is why you listen to preachers. This is why you study the word of God. This is why you have fellowship with the believer. You are trying to learn how to use what you have. And you have many things in your spirit. You have the right to prayer. You have faith in your spirit. And that's not all. Number four. We have grace and favor. <laughs> the sister said, many went for interview. The moment she showed up, even the interview had lost protocol. How many of you read about Esther? In Esther chapter 5, verse 1, verse 2. If you read chapter 4, verse 16, first, Esther told us what will happen to her if she dared what she was about to dare. If you enter when you are not summoned, it's against the law. And those of you who know history, you know that the law of the Medes and the Persians altered not. Nothing changes it. If you violate it, even if you are the son of the king, you will suffer the consequence. That's the, that's the, that's the honor of the Persian Empire. If the king speaks his law, his word is like the word of a god. So Esther knew, if I do this, I will die. He said, but let's entreat the Lord for something. And what they were looking for is called favor. And in Esther 5 verse 2, Esther entered, the king looked at her and the Bible said the king, she found favor before the king. What did the king do? Instead of giving commandment for her to be slaughtered, the king said, come. 
what do you want? Before she answered, the king said, I will give you. Kings don't talk like that. Because they don't have the right to go back on their word. That was why when the, the daughter of Herodias was dancing and the king said, anything you want, I will give you. Even if it's half of my kingdom. She said, I want the head of John the Baptist. The Bible said it grieved the king. But she, he has spoken. And the head of a prophet was cut off. This is to show you the rigidity of the regions we are talking about here. This same king said, whatever you want, I will give you. Before she spoke, it's even if it is half of my kingdom. That's what favor does. How can you hear who possesses so much grace and favor be thinking to yourself that you will struggle? See, when people are crying, out of the empathy of Christ, we, we, we relate with their sorrows, but we are not crying with them. Because we have a system of exoneration. It's called favor. No matter how bad this country becomes, it won't affect us. When we pray for this country, it's not so that things will work for us. When we pray for this country, it's so that things will work for others. Why we win them to the kingdom? Somebody may hear and say, forget all those religious people they are talking. We are not just talking. We are talking by the authority of scripture. He said, my God shall supply all your needs, not according to the government of your country. He said, according to his riches, according to his government. That's why he said, cast thy seeds in the morning in the evening withhold not thy hand he said give a portion to seven give a portion to eight you know not what evil will come upon the earth that means even if evil comes upon the earth we are separated we are exonerated and it was shown in egypt when egypt was under attack goshen was separated anywhere we are is god's embassy so we are not perturbed that things will go wrong with us no we are praying so that there will be peace in the land so that god's agenda can try and so that people can be saved not because we are handicapped but you see one of the things that makes us survive regardless of the circumstance is the consciousness of the favor that we carry listen brothers and sisters if they want to choose two people <laughs> you are you are just praying for the second person that they will add because you are already choosing <laughs> those who are around me they know that's the mentality and we are audacious we say it you are coming to a place they say they need three people you say lord help two others not one of them because i am choosing in him i am a part of the beloved i was chosen before the foundations of the world i cannot be rejected here they say oh it's one person they need you say oh god help them to bear the disappointment <laughs> because this is the one person i don't know the mindset you have but hear me there's a way to deploy spiritual things one of it is your consciousness paul was speaking in colossians chapter 3 verse 1 he said if you say you are dead and risen with christ he said let your affection be on the things above we think from the heavenly dimension because we belong to that company tell yourself i'm favored favor is my aroma i have wisdom i do what no ordinary man can do i have the power of god on my inside i rule my world i'm relevant in my generation I am of the takeover generation. I prophesy over someone. The favor that breaks protocols. The favor that commands resources. The favor that commands the allegiance of kings. It rests upon you now. Do you know how much favor is on your life? Everywhere you go, there is the fragrance of favor from your life. That's why nothing you do fail. It can't fail. You have to be taught how to fail. Because you come from a realm where nothing fails. But you must be aware that this thing is on your life. These are the things God has given to us. But we are not maximizing it. Rather, we are going to fight and compete with the world to learn their ways. So they tell the Christian, well, uh, you have to pay bribe for it to happen. They tell the Christian, you have to compromise. And a Christian is compromising. A Christian. A Christian that can pray and heaven will move. A Christian that has wisdom that it cannot be denied. A Christian that has favor that can command the heart of kings. That same Christian is compromising. What do you call that kind of person? They know not. Neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. I have said, ye are gods. Because you are the children of the Most High. He said, but you shall fall like one of the princes. Why are they falling? Because they know not. This is why in this kingdom, ignorance is too expensive. You can't afford it. Oh. And that's not all. You are anointed with his anointing. Acts 1 8, it says, Not many days from now, you shall receive the Holy Ghost and power. Sir, there is power on your life. Oh. You don't know, that's why you talk carelessly. There is power. When you talk, things happen. 
you are not aware that's why you are not emitting it you are not aware that's why you are not stirring it so when they tell you meditate on scripture you say i'm tired say fast you say i'm tired ha. you need power to keep issuing out because there's a fountain of power in you you are the one to make it flow jesus said let your light so shine that means if you don't let it it will not shine the light is there but you what let it shine Ephesians 3 20 he said God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all you ask or think according not to the power in you the power at work on your inside there is power in you you must put it to work and if you begin to put it to work <laughs> you will see how your life will change some of the things that happen when we talk casually sometimes they scare me I've seen people who are buried 10 years 20 years come casually I say by this time next year carry your child some of them I even tell them I'm coming back next year I will name your child and like joke it happens not because I'm an apostle I'm conscious that there's something on my inside and it's not on my inside because I'm an apostle it's on my inside because Christ died for me Christ was buried for me Christ rose from the dead for me and right now the Holy Ghost lives on my inside so when I talk glory issues out and that's not all we have the insurance of the name of Jesus we have a name that is our defense in Mark 16 verse 17 he said this sign shall follow them that believe in my name so he gave us the right to use his name how can you have all of these things and you are disadvantaged don't you think the angels are shocked when they see you fail they say this guy has the right to prayer this guy has the right to wisdom and principles of the kingdom this guy has favor on his life this guy has the anointing of God on his life. This guy has faith in his spirit. This guy has the anointing of God on his life. This guy has the right to use the name of Jesus. How can he fail? In 1 Peter chapter 1 verse, chapter 2 verse 9, which is actually the first place he was reiterating it here because this is the second writing. But in 1 Peter 2 9, he said, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation. See, God separated us. To manifest his possibilities through us so when he's talking about a holy nation here it's not just a people separated from sin no it's a peculiar generation that when you want to see God's faithfulness when you want to see God's power when you want to see God's kindness in case you don't have a book to read when you look at these people these people should reveal to you the extent to which God is faithful these people should reveal to you the extent to which God is kind he said you are a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him that has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. What this means is anything the world suffers, we are not permitted to suffer it. So when you look at us, our life will suggest to you that we are living beyond the systems. Our life will suggest to you that we are living beyond the limitations that the people who have no God are suffering. But unfortunately, when you look at Christians, it is the same sickness that the sinners are suffering that we are suffering. It's the same poverty that we are suffering. It's the same mishap that happens to the godless people that is happening to us. So when you are preaching sometimes, they are looking at you. What, what is the proof of these very lofty things we are talking about? When I go to the hospital, you are there struggling with me to see the doctor. When I have an accident, you too have accident. When I'm sick, you too are sick. When my people are dying, your people are also dying. I'm poor, you are also poor. So what are you talking about? If you cannot guarantee the ones that are obtainable in this world, how can you guarantee the one that is in the world to come? Don't it look to you like a philosophy? And so if we must prove to people that what we are talking about the world to come is real, we must begin to demonstrate it from here. This is why God has not waited till we get to eternity to bless us. This is why God is blessing us from here as a testimony that everything he promised in eternity is a reality and so no christian should live below the standard that christ himself manifested when he lived in the world but why are we living below those standards ignorance we don't know what has been made available and even the ones we are aware have been made available we don't engage it with the necessary focus with the necessary courage with the necessary faith and the deliberateness with which we should engage it. Everything we are given is given to us to give us an advantage that we might become like God. There are many things God has given to us for an advantage. The reason we are having this Thanksgiving service and the reason I'm going in this route is to let you know that even the Thanksgiving today 
is one of the strategic things God has made available for our advantage. But many will come for this Thanksgiving and go back and all they will remember is that they danced and they sweated. So either ignorance or poor consciousness is the reason why we don't maximize the things God has made available. Listen, our God is a loving father. He breaks his heart to see us going through the perils of life. He breaks his heart to see us recognize ourselves as his children, yet not manifest his dimensions. So he has made numerous things available to us so that at least one will become an advantage. experience is the last you will ever have the last oppression you suffer is the last you will ever suffer i decree and declare upon the authority of scripture from today step into the overcoming realm of life step into the realm of dominion step into the realm of victory in the name of jesus in the realm of god the two most powerful forces are mercy and thanksgiving mercy flows from god's realm unconditionally and thanksgiving brings god's presence into his the camp of his people so if you don't know anything know these three things number one know the mercy of god i tell my people here there are three prayers that everybody must pray and if you can pray daily lord have mercy on me number two lord help me number three lord thank you if you know these three prayers and you pray them, you can never be defeated. The excellency of thanksgiving is that any weapon you use, you must add thanksgiving to it. If you pray and answers come, you must thank God. If you apply wisdom and answers come, you must thank God. If you use faith and answers come, you must thank God. If you use prayer and answers come, you must thank God. If you use the anointing and answers come, you must thank God. If you use the name of Jesus and answers come, you must thank God. And hear me, as far as thanksgiving is concerned, you don't even thank God when answers come. You thank God before answers come. Because the thanksgiving is the actual provoker of the manifestation. That's why everybody must know how to thank God.